from Wingate University and WUTV. This is Wingate Today. Coming up, a side to the immigration crisis you've probably not seen before. Side by side, father and son going after their MBA and revving up on the gridiron. But first, counting the days to a new health sciences center. Hello and welcome to Wingate Today. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Wingate's new campus in Western North Carolina is coming off the drawing board and coming out of the ground. In October, officials held a topping off ceremony, putting the final steel beam at the top of the 100,000 square foot building that will house Wingate's Hendersonville campus next summer. The Health Sciences Center, as it's being called, is a one-of-a-kind public-private partnership between two governments, a hospital, a community college, and a private university. It sits on famous property on 6th Avenue and Oak Street. One of Hendersonville's founding families at one time had a large home and grew apples here in the 1920s. In the 2010s, they'll be planting seeds of learning, which is what leaders had in mind thought that it could be a transformative and unique experience in the United States. That's John Mitchell, Business and Community Development Director for Henderson County, and he's talking about the unique partnership that's gone into the Health Sciences Center. Hendersonville provided the land, Henderson County the financing, the tenants, Wingate University, Blue Ridge Community College, and Party Hospital. When completed in June, the $30 million facility will provide space for both medical services and health care education. Kurt Wargo is the Regional Dean for Wingate University Hendersonville. It's going to attract a lot more people to this area. I think having this, this new building, new state-of-the-art facilities is just going to absolutely bring more people in and want to be here at this Hendersonville campus to, to practice. Wingate came to Hendersonville in 2011 with a goal of bringing medicine to the mountains. The university is educating students, awarding a doctorate in pharmacy and master's degrees in business administration and physician assistant studies. Nicole Drake runs the PA program here. We need providers in all parts of North Carolina. We need uh, PAs in the rural communities. The hope and goal, students who attend school here will decide to stay here. I do see myself staying here. Um, that was a, a decision that we made recently. We were debating whether to go back to Florida or stay here, but I think we're gonna stay in this area and I would ideally like to work here in this area. And the area has a lot to offer, a funky downtown, recreation galore, and a quality of life the envy of many. For Wingate students, learning is centered around them. Class sizes are small, a five to one student to faculty ratio, and service is part of the program. I know that a lot of times this is an underserved area, especially healthcare wise, and to be able to put what I'm learning into action and help my community means a whole lot. Wingate's outgrown the space it's in now, which was the impetus for a new building. The university signed a 20-year lease with Henderson County and hopes to bring more health care programs here. It brings Hendersonville into a, a university town, and that's what, what I think the vision of this uh, partnership is. It's not just the building, but uh, there's a great amount of pride to have Wingate in this community. The new Health Sciences Center in Hendersonville is on a fast track. Completion date next summer. Classes are expected to begin in August. Some special needs adults had a great week at a residential camp in the mountains, thanks to volunteers from the Hendersonville campus. There they are, as 63 disabled adults arrived at Camp Blue Skies. Their family members gave the camp staff all the medications the adult campers would need for the week. Wingate Pharmacy students and professors repackaged the meds to make it easier for the camp nurses to administer the medications each day. Camp Blue Sky's health director called the Wingate students amazing and said the camp's partnership with the university is a real treasure. After the floods in South Carolina in October, some residents were flooded with generosity from here. A dozen Wingate students spent a Saturday in Sumter, South Carolina, working with the United Ministries of Sumter. They unloaded trucks filled with donated supplies, packaged canned goods and other items to be given to flood victims, and helped haul away flood damaged furniture. The effort was organized by the student group UCAN. Graduate students in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program raised money for a PT student at the University of South Carolina in Columbia who lost nearly everything in the flood. Wingate DPT students contributed several hundred dollars to help a student they'd never met. Now the inspirational story of a Wingate teenager whose lifelong dream is to become a doctor. She's on her way now. Ryan Brown joins us. Ryan, this is an incredible story. Jeff Reagan Thomas got the surprise of a lifetime at halftime of a home football game. It was thanks in part to the Make-A-Wish program, which grants wishes to children diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition. 
But as you're about to see, when Wingate gets involved, granting wishes means something extra. Since she was five, life for Reagan Thomas has looked a lot like this. Hospital stays, shots, and surgeries. Reagan suffers from chronic hereditary pancreatitis. The disease runs in my family. So my dad had it, grandpa had it all way back. And but we would get like breaks from our attacks, but she never did. It's just constantly in pain. I mean it changed she had this cute little personality all out going, but it changed everything about her living in pain like that. In February, Reagan's condition became critical. She was life flighted to a hospital in Minnesota where doctors removed her pancreas and two other organs. The risky surgery, performed only on about 600 other people, has finally allowed Reagan to find some relief. I just kept hope that one day we would find something that would help. While in the hospital, Reagan saw the positive impact the Make-A-Wish Foundation has on sick kids. It's a wonderful organization that they make kids who have gone through so much so happy. Little did Reagan know she was about to share in that same happiness. Reagan making its way onto the field. Her wish of a Caribbean cruise was granted. Well, I knew she got her wish, so I've been spending the past month basically lying to her. But like any big reveal, the surprise didn't stop there. She's had to go through so much with the absences from school, long periods of out of school, and she's always been able to keep up with her work and, and, and make her grades uh, really high grades so that she can have a, a great GPA and, and be very uh, competitive to go to college. Wingate agreed. Based on Reagan's outstanding academic achievements, she will receive a full scholarship to the university. This snapshot of shock and awe says it all. Evidently they all knew for a long time, they've just been keeping it from me, but I, I had no idea until now. It was just overwhelming, you know, it's just uh, gratefulness, uh, amazement. Reagan's long-term prognosis is still unclear, but her parents say they already see a huge improvement in her quality of life. She used to just live with a feeding tube up her nose and a recliner. So now she's out, look at her. <laughs> to be able to participate in granting wishes, Wingate Student Athlete Advisory Committee raised more than $8,000 for the foundation. Jeff, this is the second time Wingate has partnered with Make-A-Wish. Three years ago, a young boy with sickle cell disease was able to spend the day with the Bulldogs before going on a trip to Disney World. Ryan Brown, thank you very much. Homecoming 2015 had the usual fun and festivities. The Saturday in October started at the Irwin Belk track with the School of Sports Sciences Homecoming 5K and One Mile Fun Walk. Alumni awards were given out at the annual alumni breakfast. Fans gathered for tailgating, and at halftime, the homecoming court was announced. Pictured with President Rhett Brown are the homecoming king and queen from this year and last. The jam-packed weekend did include a couple of out-of-the-norm events on Friday night. Every gift of mine comes to me One of the new additions surrounding Homecoming, a concert by Hard Soul Poets, the Wingate-born band back together for the first time in more than 20 years. They played the Visualite Theater near downtown Charlotte on the Friday night of Homecoming. The band has produced a new album, and they're on the schedule to perform on campus next year at Homecoming. The other event was the naming and dedication of the Wingate lacrosse field. The turf field next door to the football stadium opened two years ago. The dedication came during halftime of a match between current lacrosse players and alums. The field is named in honor of Graham Gill, a former lacrosse player who died in his sleep in 2010 at the age of 25. Graham got it right. We were good for him, but I think he was even better for us. When we say one dog, Graham's enthusiastic and supportive spirit is one we invoke. Justin Graham Gill, in addition to playing lacrosse, was a student leader and served as president of the Kappa Alpha fraternity. After his death, friends established a scholarship in his honor. It's awarded each year to a member of the Greek community possessing leadership skills and commitment to college and community service. Gill's parents are helping fund it. When we came out here for an event right about a month after Graham died, all his friends wanted to start the scholarship. So we just followed along around behind them, and that's really how the scholarship started because everybody else did, and it's just continued to grow since then. Graham definitely didn't like a lot of attention, and so I don't know if he'd really like to be here for all of this, but I know he really appreciates looking down on us and 
and seeing his legacy live on. It means so much to us for him to, to his name to be on this field. He loved lacrosse. He loved Wingate University. He loved North Carolina. If you'd like more information about the Justin Graham Gill Memorial Scholarship, contact the Wingate University Office of Resource Development at 704-233-8828. If you've been to a Bulldog football game recently, you probably noticed there's some new energy in the stadium, and it's high-powered. Dustin Etheridge joins us now. We're not just talking about the football team that's high-powered. That's right, Jeff. This year, fans to the Irwin Belk Football Stadium were greeted with some new toys, you might say, to enhance their experience at home football games. There's the new video board, the new gate directly in front of the field house, and the loudest of all, the Wingate Chopper. With this, um there's some expectation to the run out. The run out, it's a tradition not exclusive to the Wingate Bulldogs, but one they've custom tailored this year and leading the charge. The chopper. The Wingate Chopper. It's a Harley Davidson FX ST soft tail. It's painted silver, and if you can look past all the chrome, <laughs> you might notice a familiar face. Victor E. Bulldog. And it makes sense because the chopper serves as a chariot of sorts for Victor E. on game day. The Chopper made its debut at Wingate's first home game on September 19th against Brevard. It's a product of some tireless work by members of the Bulldog Club. And as Bill Nash, the director of the Bulldog Club, puts it... But we needed to create uh, noise, attention to, you know, to that, to that part of the event. With the video board and the gate in place, Nash says the icing on the cake was the Chopper. And when the decision was made to add the Chopper to the runout, they decided to look locally. Move the folks at Iron Horse. Iron Horse Motorcycles, a staple of commerce in Union County, provided the chopper. Dennis Hefner is a service manager and VP of Iron Horse. And they said they wanted something. They wanted to ride uh, one of the mascots or somebody across the fields during the football game. And that's exactly what Victory does on game day. He leads your fighting bulldogs into battle on the back of the chopper. And with the addition of the video board and the gate tunnel, Nash says the chopper gives the entire stadium a pop on game day. Right, it is a big game, big big stadium, and maybe even dare I say it, a D1 kind of kind, kind of uh, atmosphere to that. Iron Horse has also built motorcycles for the NFL's Dallas Cowboys, and more locally, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. We did one for Wake Forest, and we made some flamethrowers for it. But don't expect to see any fireballs at Irwin Belk Stadium anytime sure. soon. We would like to become really proficient with the way we're going now before we start having to dodge flames. Pyrotechnics aside, both Iron Horse and Wingate can agree that the entire process is something to get excited about. So we appreciate having the opportunity to be involved in it. Go in early, get there early so they can, you know, see that and be a part of it. It's also important to point out how all of these new toys work together on game day. The runout is actually led by the chopper as players run through the gate and the entire spectacle is broadcast to the stadium via the new video board. But we're still waiting to hear about those flamethrowers, Jeff. Maybe next year. Maybe so. Dustin, thank you very much. It's a chance to network with future employers. The School of Pharmacy hosts a career fair and interview day each year. In early October, more than a dozen companies came to the Levine College of Health Sciences for soon-to-be grads to meet and discuss career opportunities related to pharmacy. Representatives from Carolina's healthcare system to Walmart participated. They all agree that Wingate Pharmacy students are a cut above. That's one of the things that I hear on and on from our companies that come to talk with us. The other thing that we hear is that our students are very professional, and that's one of the things that we work on very hard in our school. So I think those are things that make our students stand out. Students say they appreciate the immediate access to potential employers in a concentrated setting. On the subject of employers, kudos to Wingate University. The school's been named one of the top workplaces in the Charlotte region in a survey commissioned by the Charlotte Observer. Wingate came in fourth place among large companies in the region, an accompanying story in the newspaper called the campus One Class Act. The top workplaces are based on results of employee feedback surveys administered by the research firm Workplace Dynamics. Coming up on Wingate today, comic opera that's been an audience favorite since 1878, how Wingate's bringing it to life, and later, a surprise visit that gets viewed around the world. We'll be right back. Wingate University wants to remind you about the critical role you play in keeping our community safe. Remember the following. Always keep your doors and windows secure at all times. This includes ensuring your deadbolts are locked. 
when walking on campus, especially at night, stay in pairs and groups. If you're going to be walking alone or returning to campus late, call Campus Safety for an escort. Report suspicious or inappropriate persons immediately, especially if you don't believe they're a member of the Wingate University community. Call Campus Safety at 704-233-8999 or call 911. Remember, keeping our campus safe requires work from all of us watching out for each other. A hot topic in the news these days is immigration, specifically child migrants, and there's little agreement on what to do about them. Chuck Gordon is here now. Chuck, you had a chance to sit down with one of the most highly sought after authorities on this subject. How was it? Jeff, Wingate University recently hosted former LA Times reporter Sonia Nazario. She actually rode the rails with some of these child migrants, the length of Mexico. Her journey turned her from a journalist into an activist. When Mexico sends its people... Donald Trump would tell you that migrants are coming to the United States for the worst possible reasons and that we need to build a wall to keep them out. A series of events on the Wingate University campus is challenging that view. Sonia Nazario was on campus in October to discuss immigration and her book Enrique's Journey. When Enrique came more than a decade ago, he was largely motivated by wanting to reunify and be with his mother again. The Pulitzer Prize winning book follows Enrique from Honduras to North Carolina. During the journey, Enrique traveled through some of the most dangerous parts of Mexico riding atop freight trains and dodging police, bandits, and immigration officials. He made eight attempts before he finally crossed the border. Nazario made the journey herself about a dozen years ago. Now she speaks at universities and other institutions, hoping to put a human face on the crisis. Students email me every day and say I was raised racist, anti-immigrant, to hate all migrants. Uh, I was forced to read your book, and this has changed my perception. Freshman Maddie Pope won first place in an essay contest at Wingate University after reading the book. She said her views used to align more with Trump's. Seeing it as my country, you know, and then just over the past couple of years, and especially as I've read the book and looked more into the issue of immigration and realized kind of the humanity of it. That would hearten Stephanie Slaughter. Slaughter was a field producer on Which Way Home, an Emmy-winning film that tracks young Latinos trying to reach the United States through Mexico. Their tale is as heartbreaking as Enrique's. You see it at one point in the film when the kids are like, yeah, 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 we know it's dangerous. Yeah, 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 we know this can happen. Um, but they're determined to, to travel north. She brought her film to Wingate last month. But both Enrique's Journey and Which Way Home came out before 2010, and things have changed. According to Nazario, these are no longer economic migrants. A lot of these children face w one choice when the gangs and narcos approach them. Join or we'll kill you. Early last month, Nazario wrote in the New York Times that the flood of unaccompanied minors entering the U.S. were refugees, not immigrants. As one person said, when the house is burning, you're going to find a way to get out. They're squeezed in the middle, fleeing drug-related gang violence at home and facing a crackdown at the Mexican border. And yet they keep coming by the thousands, trying over and over until they get to the U.S. Maybe it's that youth that allows them to not feel the fear that the adults had. The problem is vexing. Nazario says the only way to fix it is to change the economic situation in Central America. No wall is going to stop a child who has not seen their mother in 10 years and is fleeing someone who's trying to kill them. All first-year students at Wingate were assigned to read Enrique's Journey. The book has jump-started a discussion on campus about the immigration crisis. There was the film, author talk, and lunch and learn. Other events are planned, Jeff, and the discussion is likely to continue. Chuck, you can see Sonia Nassario's lecture in its entirety on Wingate Presents weeknights at 9.30 here on WUTV Channel 22. A daughter's love for her parents and their love for Wingate University. In mid-September, the school dedicated a prayer labyrinth just outside Austin Auditorium. It was donated by Blythe Taylor, the former success coach at Wingate, in honor of her parents, Chuck and Carol Taylor. Chuck served as an executive VP and CFO at Wingate in the 2000s, a time of great growth at the institution. I wanted there to be a mark of the Taylors here, you know, and um, because they'd been so integral to the faith and intellectual community here. The labyrinth is a pathway of stones leading to a central point and back out again. Labyrinths are said to have been used for over 3,000 years, Carol Taylor hopes this one will be used by students to find some clarity during a busy time in their lives. So they'll be able to step away from the everyday cares and worries and anxieties and just really, as Chuck says, get in touch with their hearts and get in touch with God. 
Chuck Taylor said, by design, prayer labyrinths promote inward reflection in prayer, because as you step, you must look down with your head bowed toward your heart. Wingate hosted more than 150 people from Charlotte's arts and business community at the Duke Mansion in Charlotte's Myers Park community as part of President Brown's series of meet and greets. One of the highlights of the evening, music professor David Brooks performed on the legendary Horowitz Steinway, a nine-foot grand piano that belonged to the late, great Vladimir Horowitz. Steinway says it's the most traveled piano in the world. A new art gallery opened to the public, the Henson Art Museum, next door to the Bat Center. It features famed artist Ben Long's latest fresco, True Art is to Conceal Art, painted on a freestanding 10 by 7 foot wall. A dedication was held in late September. Donations from three local families helped pay for the fresco and museum. Ron Henson of Henson Electric and his wife named the museum in honor of their son Eric, who's taught art in the public schools for years. We're proud of both of our sons because without the hard work of my other son, Jeff, in the business, we wouldn't be able to provide the resources to do what we're doing here tonight. In addition to the fresco, the museum also houses a number of pieces by well-known international and North Carolina artists. The Henson Art Museum is open weekdays from 9 to 4. Over the last few months, we've told you about new additions to the cultural arts, a new music wing, addition of the Henson Art Museum. So it should come as no surprise that students and faculty are taking it up a notch as well. One example, the opera program presented HMS Pinafore in early November. Kristen Johnson is here. There is a lot that went into this. Jeff, HMS Pinafore is one of the most famous operas performed today. The comic opera examines love in the British class system. And while the audience could no doubt expect a lot of talent from the students on stage to those in the orchestra, when the curtain opens, it's the first impression that some hoped woos the crowd. For about the next three hours, the folks filling these seats will watch what happens when a vision transforms from creative minds to center stage. Most people on this campus probably don't know what goes into this. Um, and that's, the, that's part of the magic. To make magic, well, that began months ago. The HMS Pinafore was selected as the latest Wingate opera by director Jesse Wright Martin around springtime. Talks about how to turn a stage into a ship started shortly after. Starting off building the black part of the model uh, so I could really see what the set was going to look like inside that box was the first step. And that took a little bit of time, but then after I started putting the pieces together for the scenery, the um, it really started to take a, a much bigger form and when the form came into place then the vision got solidified a little bit more and when the vision got solidified a little bit more then some of the other design elements like what color things were going to be and what kind of props were going to go along with it and where the doors were going to be, how the stairs were going to work, all of that stuff really kind of started to flow. Said designer Jason Stewart estimates it took around 400 hours for construction. And then, of course, there are the details that grace the decks, giving the ship that added authenticity. Every year the set has gotten more and more incredible and the costumes have got better and the acting has gotten better and so has the music. Muffy Underwood should know the senior who started out in community theater has now had starring roles in several of Wingate's opera productions. I definitely see the program getting stronger and stronger with us starting to do more dramatic and heavy operas as the program gets larger and as the students start to get more and more talented each year, which they certainly have. And I think eventually we'll be start doing Mozart, which will be phenomenal to do and I'll, I can't wait to come back in a couple years and see that. This marks the ninth opera for Martin and she too shares in the vision of seeing each production get bigger and better through brainstorming and teamwork. As the number of students, the, the um, vocal ability grows, then we may. We may be able to move to things like Mozart like Muffy was talking about. That is my hope. The music department is rocketing like crazy. Um, it's so much bigger, there's so much excitement, and the, and the opera is just one part of that. After the performance was over, the set was torn down and work began on the next production. The next opera is set for February, but folks don't have to wait that long until the next musical performance. A wind ensemble concert is set for November 30th. Jeff. Thanks, Kristen. Charlotte's Ballantine community celebrated fall with the annual chili cook-off. Representatives from Wingate University Ballantyne were there to defend their second place title from last year. The event went off without a hitch. Despite all the rain we had in October, they served up chili for the young and old. And though they didn't place in this year's chili competition, they're not discouraged. The goal is to be out in the community visible. Our professor, our staff, we're all here um, helping 
and uh, it really is a cohesive group, which is also, of course, our campus is a very intimate, great learning campus of support. Uh, so I think it's important for our students and faculty to see that we're out here and participating in the community. The Chili Festival started five years ago and has grown into an all-day festival. They're both named Kenneth Long, both work at the same company, and both live in the same town. And as Sharon Foote explains, they both have something else in common. There should be at 1130, there should be some lunch traffic. The dad is Kenneth Long Jr. The son is Kenneth Long III. The son goes by Kent. When Kent was little, his dad coached his soccer team. Now the son is coaching the dad, in a way. He's my tutor. I'm a little bit stronger maybe at the math portions, because um, I had that in school. But um, So if he has some questions, he'll ask me. But he does pretty well. Ken Long and Kent Long are earning Master of Business Administration degrees from Wingate University. During the day, they both work for Duke Energy in separate buildings in uptown Charlotte. After work, they often drive together to Wingate's campus in Ballantyne and usually sit side by side during MBA classes. A peek at the family photo album shows this father and son often side by side. Kent's early childhood, teenage years, hiking together, hanging out together. Ken was even best man in his son's wedding last year. Ken is an information technology manager at Duke Energy, where he's worked for more than 30 years. He earned a bachelor's degree with a double major in business and computer science. Ken is going back to get his master's for two reasons. He loves learning and... The other reason is to prepare for my career after I retire. I would like to probably teach at a community college. Son Kent graduated from UNC Charlotte with an engineering degree and played midfield for the nationally ranked 49ers soccer team. Now a project manager at Duke Energy, Kent hopes getting an MBA will enhance his career. Looking for job opportunities when you're looking for promotions um, and, and it gives you some good skills and good education that you can learn and apply to your job. So whose idea was it for the father and son to get their MBAs at the same time? Well, depends on who you ask. It was probably mine just because, you know, I wanted to, as I said, I wanted to prepare and uh, basically teach, teach college. So Dad had been taking some classes at some community colleges around the area. And after about four or five, I said, Dad, you know, um, if you were to put this towards a grad degree, you could already be halfway done by now. They agree that Dad chose the MBA program at Wingate, started taking classes, and recommended Wingate MBA to his son, who started a semester later. So are they competitive in class? Uh, n no. <laughs> a lot of his grades, I don't know what he gets, and he didn't know what I get. He gave you the diplomatic answer. Um, he is competitive. He does like to compare grades. Competition aside, they say going to grad school together has brought them even closer. And this provided a good opportunity for us to get to spend some time together. Yeah, we can discuss, you know, what we're going to be talking about in class. Uh, it's just a good time to, you know, just relax and talk about things, share things. And they also agree on the quality of Wingate's MBA program. They say it really sets you up for success. Ken, the father, is scheduled to complete his MBA in December of this year. Kent, the son, will finish in May of 2016. Jeff? Thanks, Sharon. Well, you talk about family. Sigma 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 sorority was having its midday celebration on campus when the unexpected happened. <laughs> One of their sorority sisters, Ty Bates, had joined the military a year earlier and hadn't seen her sister since. So she decided to surprise them, and what a surprise it was. Screaming and crying, Bates engulfed with hugs. The cell phone video went viral, more than 17,000 views on YouTube. It was picked up by the Huffington Post and other media. Wingate posted it on its social media, and it reached into the thousands. And that's our show for this time. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Thanks for watching.